Again, our next presentation is Catherine Castleman from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Will be, will be uh, our introducer. Who's from Charleston? Yeah, we, we could we could eat food from each other's garden within our 200 mile range. <laughs> um, so I was trying to dig up some damaging information on Dan um, because I wanted to make it into a roast, but I don't think you're gonna have rotisserie Schlossberg tonight because he's not there. He's a really excellent person, and the first the first time I met him was I was just struck by how friendly and outgoing he was. And, thought, you know, this is a really great person who takes care of his friends and he knows he knows how to like make people feel really special. And then I heard him play piano. <laughs> and I just hit the floor because I couldn't understand how someone who has so much kindness and approachability can also have so much talent. But I guess that's something that we learn a lot at Yale. Um, so it might seem to an outside observer when you see Dan play or perform that he has a natural gift. Um, but most of his friends know that his natural gift comes from many, many long hours in practice rooms at Spray or on stage at Woolsey um, or in the pit at the UT. Um, and his dedication to excellence is really clear when you figure out how much time he spent developing the skill. So, um, Dan was already a prodigy back in high school, and online you can find lots of articles about this if you're interested, and <laughs> radio interviews and such. Um, and I've had the privilege of watching him develop this talent here at Yale, right here in the common room with many recitals and um, performances of original music that are sung by his operatically inclined friends, and um, in your role as conductor uh, in many musicals like uh, Little Night Music I saw, and the weird one about the French nuns, <laughs> and most recently, Carousel. <laughs> so it's a wide range. Um, and so Dan is always willing to accompany a friend um, if, they ha if they have a musical theater audition, or in my case, he accompanied me in a jazz set once, which was really nice. And he's the first to praise other mem members of an ensemble part of. Um, I think he's one of those rare and talented musicians who delights in taking uh, the back seat to help other musicians shine. And that's really special. Um, so it's clear you love the process of creative collaboration and that's something that I think will serve you well in the future. Uh, so my memories of Dan after graduation will include our early bonding over Sondheim's lyrics, <laughs> uh, late night procrastination sessions in Vanderbilt, when we googled cute animals and communist, communist humor and exotic fruits. <laughs> <laughs> and the one evening that you read a passage from Finnegan's Wake, and I read it in this very slow and mystical voice, and then we were all kind of just mesmerized, and he said, you know, one day I'm going to write an opera to accompany this text. And I'm, I'm holding you to that. I don't want to do it. Um, and so I think I'm almost positive that we will see his name in lights one day, and we can all be thrilled to say that we knew him when. Well, that was, uh, that was way too kind for, I don't know. Um, yeah. um, so I want to share with you a little bit uh, what I've been sort of working on for the past uh, few months and in the summer. And this is kind of a difficult thing to talk about just because uh, people have sort of vast amounts of difference in their experience with music. Some people um, might uh, be musicians themselves or know nothing about music. So I have to kind of find a way to talk about this that most people can understand. So that being said, if I say anything that completely boggles you, just feel free to raise your hand and ask me what that means. Um, so, yeah, um, my senior project, uh, as I'm an intensive music major, we have the option of doing either uh, composition or a paper. So I elected to do the composition because I would probably be doing something anyway. Um, so uh, my composition is for orchestra. Uh, it's for the YSO. Um, which is uh, a really awesome opportunity. And I guess uh, I'm going to start with basically like why I'm doing this. And 
Um, as a composer, writing for orchestra is kind of like the ultimate challenge. Um, it's incredibly difficult. There are so many things that are going on. Uh, there are endless possibilities in terms of, you know, say there are 50 musicians in the orchestra. You have, you can do whatever you want with any of these musicians, combine them in various ways. Uh, and also, the, the other reason uh, that I'm writing this is because uh, I had the opportunity to conduct with the YSO, sort of invited me to write a piece for them, so I really couldn't turn it down. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I guess I guess the main reason is that it's kind of like this Mount Everest. It's like it's like one of the highest things that you can do, and this is my first uh, orchestral piece of this size. It's going to be about 20 or 25 minutes, um, so that's that's a big challenge. Um, so this summer I went to uh, Switzerland and Germany to sort of get as much background knowledge um, and research and. Uh, go to concerts and everything as I could. Um, and when I was in Switzerland, I was at the this uh, music archive called the Paul Zacher Stiftung, which is probably the the largest collection of 20th century music uh, in the world. All the music uh, manuscripts by composers. And so when I was at the Zacher Stiftung, I, I studied one of uh, a, a piece by Luciano Berio called Sinfonia. And this piece is, is for a large orchestra, and I'm actually going to play an excerpt from it later. And it, it really, um, studying it and, listen, and reading about how he conceived about this piece really inspired me in my piece in many different ways. Um, and so I'll talk about that a little later. Uh, and then I, after I went to this archive, I was in Berlin for uh, a couple months. And it really, um, it, was, it was really awesome. I mean, Berlin is a great city. And, there is so much uh, artistically and musically going on there, and even just like the physical space of the city, and that it's like caught between various worlds, like old world uh, Germany and Nazi architecture and modern architecture, all sort of overlapping, and and that kind of uh, landscape really inspired me uh, in my piece as well, like juxtaposing various things um, and like having these different um, worlds of music colliding. Uh, also, German music um, in general, uh, when you think about a symphony or symphonic work, it's very, very difficult to escape the works of German composers, which is one of the reasons that I went to Switzerland and to Germany is to sort of like come to terms with that. Uh, you have the names of you know Beethoven and Brahms and Wagner just like standing there as like bastions of this style, and you can't really ignore that. Um, and sort of German music has taken this uh, this almost um, hegemonic stance over the symphony orchestra, as I think I'll talk about a little later. Um, but that's what I was kind of exploring when I was when I was in uh, Europe. And going on, oh yes. So problems that I sort of first had to initially overcome, and I'm still overcoming, are that experience. Like I have basically I have very little experience writing for orchestra. Um, and writing for orchestra is extremely different from writing, say, for piano, is that you have to deal with, as I said, vast more amounts of instruments at once. Um, and also, one of the other things is sort of like the relevance of orchestral music today. Um, just symphony orchestras all over the world are facing um, economic, oh, economic downturns uh, like anywhere else, but it's becoming increasingly more difficult to even conceive of having a work premiered by an orchestra. Uh, one of the composers that I was studying with this summer actually told a story about how when he was young, he's probably in his, oh, he's 80 actually, he's 80 now, and when he was growing up, uh, to make it as a composer in America meant that you had uh, one new piece premiered by the New York Philharmonic every year. Uh, and now it's more like you're lucky if you ever get a piece premiered by the New York Philharmonic. They probably premiere uh, one piece, or in the past 10 years, they've probably premiered maybe you could count them on your fingers how many pieces they've done. Um, so it's just like the composers are, are facing this, this big challenge of getting their work performed. So that's, that's it. I mean, that, that wasn't much of a problem for me now, um, but more like the conceptual, like how do I go about writing a piece in a genre that's becoming more obsolete. Um, so uh, in terms of approaches to writing this, sort of like what I was thinking about, as I was talking about before, sort of dealing with this Germanic tradition 